Hello everyone, hope you're all doing well and for uh, this is Maria Shokat and she is working as a machine learning and AI engineer at LinkedIn. Right now she's an intern and I wanted to learn from her experience how did she end up there, what was the process like and what are the things that other people can follow to follow the same path. Uh, thank you so much for joining this session and I hope this will be very helpful to a lot of people. So my first question is what was your background like and how did you end up at LinkedIn? Thank you, Shafika, firstly, for having me. It's so kind of you to give opportunity to other students like us. So uh, I did my bachelor's in electrical engineering from University of Engineering and Technology, Lahore. And after that, I worked for three years as a machine learning engineer. I transitioned from electrical engineering to machine learning engineering by doing some online courses, some projects. Mm -hmm. Then after that, I came to US for my graduate studies, again, in electrical engineering with research focus in machine learning and mm. from that based on the projects that I was doing in my graduate school in masters uh, I applied to uh, multiple internships and I landed at at LinkedIn this summer okay perfect congratulations for landing the job there and I hope it's going great how, how's the LinkedIn headquarters there how, how do you feel working there it's as dreamy as you could imagine uh, i saw your videos about the google uh, headquarter and i always wanted to experience something similar uh, and this is that kind of dream come true uh, i think they have their best office here in sunnyville mm. they have offices all around the world but the headquarter is up there and everybody keeps mentioning food at google and all of the tech companies i will mention the same <laughs> the food here is amazing the campus here is amazing the mm. vibe feel is Great. So my next question is that you came from an electrical engineering background and then you transitioned to ML and AI engineering. How was the transition like and what were the courses that you did that helped you during this? Okay, so yeah, it's usually a question uh, how to transition from electrical to machine learning engineering. But to me, I think it came very naturally because most engineering fields have this fundamental mathematical education, which mm -hmm. can transferred between fields, especially the, the uh, mathematics that you study in your electrical engineering or computer engineering is mm -hmm. very easily translated into machine learning engineering. So the courses that I would definitely want to mention would be probability and stats, numerical analysis, uh, different types of algebra, calculus, all of that directly goes into machine learning. We do talk about whenever we talk about machine learning, we're always going a little high level on the code and development side. Mm. But this is where machine learning actually starts. And even if you take online courses, you need to have a background in these mathematical courses first. And for that, you need to do either electrical engineering, computer engineering, or if there is a specific machine learning field. So what I did was uh, take these courses in engineering, and after that, just develop some uh, skills in Python, TensorFlow, Keras uh, using Coursera. Moving on, so I have a question about ML engineering because right now it's the uh, it's all the people can talk about. It's going on the hype, and I wanted to discuss what are the different avenues in ML engineering. For example, we see ML engineers, ML researchers. AI researchers and then even uh, ML ops engineers. So what are the different domains that you can join after you've done machine learning engineering? Yes, so as you have already mentioned, there's uh, multiple fields. You start from data science because any ML uh, algorithm is going to require a lot of data uh, extraction, data cleaning, uh, data management. So data science is where it all starts. And then you hmm. go into ML research where you are either uh, comparing multiple ML algorithms on what which of those works best for your problem, or you are developing new ML algorithms. So that is the second part of it, ML research. And then there's ML engineer, which uh, take different types of algorithms and write the code for them in a way that can be used in a product or a service. And then comes the ML op. Uh, ML ops, what they do is uh, they take the code written by ML engineers, but make it into a product that can be maintained and that can be uh, continually updated, uh, just like mm -hmm. any other software product. And uh, that that's these are four basic dimensions that I think ML uh, has. 
Okay. Uh, that's great. So my next question would be: So what were the projects that you chose during your undergrad and masters that helped you uh, learn more about machine learning? Uh, so for ML, I took one class in machine learning specifically. As I said, in undergrad, there were other mathematical classes which are useful. Mm. Uh, for machine learning, uh, I took one ML class, and in that, I did some data analysis with uh, a tweet tweets data set. So sentiment analysis, it's a very common project that a lot of mm. students do, but that teaches you a lot of basics. So my approach has always been that when you're in school, take projects which teach you the basics of any domain. So that mm. was my undergrad project. And then for my final year project as well, I took a machine learning, it was entirely software project. Uh, and that project was for using machine learning, some of the machine learning algorithms like Bayesian, uh, networks to uh, basically diagnose or identify some uh, diseases using a mobile mm. application. So there is a mobile application that takes input from users, and uh, then there is a machine learning engine or machine learning algorithm behind that application that converts th those inputs into prediction of whether you have any heart disease or diabetes or things like that. So that taught me the basics of data science and uh, some basic machine learning algorithms. So uh, these were the two major projects that in undergrad that got me into uh, machine learning domain. And for graduate school, now I'm doing a little more advanced work, uh, graph neural networks, reinforcement learning. These are two very hot fields right now. Um, a lot of people have seen reinforcement learning, the autonomous driving vehicles or the robots which can walk on their own or talk on their own. That's all reinforcement learning. So I'm hmm. doing research on that and then graph neural networks is completely new area but out of all this i think the uh, gist of this matter is that always take uh, projects which can teach you the very very basics of any field and from there you can grow okay that's perfect uh, just one question about the reinforcement learning that you mentioned is it also applicable in llms because i i read somewhere that even in llms you do need reinforcement learning in between Actually, I just learned about that yesterday. So my project in LinkedIn is related to LLMs. So uh, I was just reading the basic paper of chat GPT and realized that, oh, they, they use reinforcement learning to train that. So I, I yeah. learned from that, but uh, it's interesting that uh, how different fields of machine learning mm. uh, are fusing together. Yeah. So my next question would be, since you, uh, your background is from Pakistan, you directly came from Pakistan for your master's and now mashallah you're working at LinkedIn. Uh, this will definitely inspire a lot of people and I wanted to explore more about how did you build your research profile uh, living in Pakistan and uh, what, are, what were the different avenues that you explored? So uh, actually, surprisingly, there is a lot of good work in machine learning that is being done in Pakistan, both in uh, universities and also in companies. Mm. So uh, but you have to find it out and find what suits you and approach the people and then get into it. So in my case, I would say that other than the things that I did in undergrad, what helped me was uh, taking a final year project which had machine learning on its core and for hmm. that i made sure that even if i can't find a uh, appropriate professor in my uh, immediate class the professor that i've contacted with or professors in my university i reach out uh, outside my little bubble so i did my project with a professor in lums even though i was studying in uet because that professor in lums he had a very good reputation in building in helping you build your machine learning profile so in that way you have to reach out to other universities i, I can just name a few places where there is very good research going on uh, my own university university of engineering and technology has a lot of good labs uh, there is kicks uh, people who are from lahore would know uh, this place it's called zimi institute of computer Sci studies or sciences and then there is uh, a li linguistic lab as well there are professors in the electrical and computer engineering department doing really good research then lums itu uh, nust they regularly post graduate research or uh, just research assistant positions uh, for their ml project 
projects and you can just uh, join these professor for six months to one year and do some good work and from that work you build a profile and that profile is very attracted attractive to uh, professors abroad when they are looking for uh, their research assistants or their uh, graduate students and usually that profile gets you funded positions abroad uh, all right so that's great because the uh, now that i know there are a lot of resources and uh, there is a lot of research going on in pakistan and it, i think it's not just uh, limited to pakistan it's generally in southeast asia that even if you're studying in one college you can get research association with some other college or research uh, company whatever it is uh, so the possibilities are endless for sure definitely coming Coming to the next question, uh, there is a lot of ambiguity when it comes to interviewing process for ML in, uh, ML engineers, AI engineers, because even uh, I'm not sure uh, if they have these uh, normal coding rounds as software engineers, or is there another round for machine learning knowledge? So how, how was your interview process? If you can share some bits and pieces, general, uh, that are generic to it. Sure, sure. So I, other than LinkedIn, I've interviewed with a number of companies, pretty much everybody in Silicon Valley. Uh, so I can say that, I can fairly say that most companies are still doing coding rounds, the, the data structures and algorithm rounds, which you uh, talk about a lot. Uh, and you have a lot of guides about that too on Medium. So uh, a lot of companies are doing that, uh, even for, Google, they did actually three rounds of hmm. uh, data science, uh, data structures and algorithms, and then uh, then there is always one or two domain uh, interviews, which means that then they will talk about specifically machine learning, and in that machine learning, they will actually talk about your field because machine learning has many fields: the natural language processing, the computer vision, the reinforcement learning, hmm. the graph. So whatever field you're applying for, they will have one or two domain specific interviews about uh, that field. And in that, so far, I haven't seen any like uh, them any situation where they give you a problem and you have to write a code for that. They usually discuss your approach. They tell you, hey, this is the problem. How will you approach it? And then they see your thinking. So you, it's more like a discussion. and. Uh, very different from the data structure and algorithm. I can say that it's much more non-uniform, the process. Mm -hmm. So software engineers, uh, things are very much uniform across different companies. They have similar types of interviews and the preparation is similar. You go on lead code and you know you start from there. But for machine learning, things are still evolving. So interview mm -hmm. process is always evolving as well. OK. I guess it's similar uh, to uh, uh, domains like data engineering or data science that there, even though there is a fundamental round for coding round uh, rounds, there's still uh, one or two role related interviews where they ask you specific questions about the role. So uh, it would be similar, right? But I saw that you were recently doing lead code again. So was it because of machine learning or is, was it just you were uh, you wanted to brush up your uh, problem solving skills? I wanted to brush up my problem solving skills. Plus, as I said, even for machine learning engineers, uh, there are first few rounds of uh, mm -hmm. lead. Uh, one thing that I would definitely want to mention is that while working hardcore into our own machine learning uh, domains, we ignore some of the basics. But interviews are always around the basics. So. Mm -hmm. People who are in machine learning, they would know these terms, gradient descent, uh, F1 score, recall, precision. You won't believe that how big companies even still ask uh, meaning of precision, meaning of overfitting, all that. So these mm. are the basics that you learn in your first machine learning class until the end you're being asked these questions. So brush up on your uh, very basics and make sure that you understand them in a way that you can explain them to a PhD postdoc person, as well as somebody who is a layman, uh, you have to be able to explain it through multiple dimensions. Uh, definitely, uh, that's great to know. And even with the lead code questions, data structures and algorithms interviews, you need to focus on the basics. Uh, a lot of times when you are writing a program, they will ask you, why did you use this particular data structure and this particular algorithm? And what are the trade-offs that you make between space and time complexity? So that always uh I, that's what i always tell students as well that when you're graduating at least this is the time that you can focus on uh your lead coding skills and your problem solving skills so focus on that that will pay off later 
So you came from Pakistan and now you're working in LinkedIn. Uh, how was the transition working from Pakistani tech sector to a global Silicon Valley tech sector where there's endless opportunities? Uh, is it overwhelming? How's the experience? It's definitely overwhelming. It's definitely surprising on many levels and it's exciting as well. I would say mm -hmm. the basic thing that distinguishes the culture in Pakistan and the culture here is things a, a lot more organized. You hmm. getting into a team and getting out of the team, that onboarding process and the offboarding process is much more smooth because they have done the, these big tech companies have done it so many times that uh, they have all the things documented. They have all the resource pages that you can go and uh, ask your questions. And I think that was one thing that I found difficult in Pakistan, that you start a project, the previous code is horrendous or I've done that too. I've left left code like that too but uh, there is no documentation or there is no project plans so uh, things are getting better but uh, other than that i think working work wise in pakistan we're doing very good as well we mm -hmm. are sitting in pakistan we have these companies which are working with very big uh, clients abroad and they're doing really great work and as for the management because the company sizes are smaller i guess they don't even need that big of management mm -hmm big uh, you know documentation and all that but still we're trying a lot in pakistan so that's the only difference and then other than that are the perks uh, the silicon valley perks the food the really great environment the really great views from the terrace of your office and uh, just the multiculturalism of being here and meeting people from all around the world and learning a lot from them and uh, having a lot to do in the evening actually that's one big difference even though i'm from lahore lahore is a really lively city but here uh, there's a lot that you can do with your co-workers with your uh, class fellows or whoever uh, are your friends mm -hmm. these are the major difference i wouldn't say that work is very different work is really great in pakistan as well i'm really happy for you that you are enjoying there and it's definitely a big change big transition but definitely very exciting and we are looking forward to seeing more of your journey i'll link your instagram below as well so that people can follow you and then they can learn from your experience how you are going through your journey and sometimes we just live vicariously and i i i'm i'm going through the linkedin headquarter vicariously through you so that's really amazing so i guess that's more about it thank you so much for joining and i learned a lot i hope people also learned a lot from this and i'm really hoping to meet you in person someday and we can collab on some real something on instagram for sure I would love that. Thank you so much for the opportunity. And as you said, uh, thank you for mentioning my Instagram uh, on your uh, video. And people, uh, whoever needs any help in graduate admissions or getting internships or jobs or whatever, I can try my best to help them out. So all the same. Thank you. Thank you so much. We definitely need more Pakistanis like you. And, and like uh, <laughs> Yeah.